so it's not hitting the cash side of the transaction. I think that's the differentiation. So when we use like classes for the entire and or location tracking for the entire transaction, then the balance sheet might work out a little bit better in those cases. We'll experiment with that later when we get to classes. But if I tab to the right, now we've got the income, the markup and the sales pulling over for this customer uh, or sub customer and it pulled to the account that we wanted it to, QuickBooks still made up kind of another account for the markup. So if you do the markup that way, QuickBooks kind of makes up another account, but you get you get a little bit more control on where it's gonna go as opposed to that billing one where it's just gonna make up kind of an account, which isn't, I don't think that's ideal because you'd kind of like to have the control. But in any case, here's the customer. We've got the two jobs for that customer. And then here's the total for uh, customer number one. So now let's do one for the second customer, just so we can see customer number two and see how this kind of expands our reports or our reports are gonna get, you know, kind of unwieldy if we have a lot of customers, gonna be a lot of line items, a lot of columns. So if I go again and say, okay, let's do this again and say we have an expense again. And let's say this one's for sub customer 501 on like the eighth let's say and i'm going to use my item technique down here and we're going to say materials this time uh let's say let's say six thousand we're going to make it billable and customer customer five oh i did it again hold on this isn't a customer up top this is the vendor that we're doing do you want to pre-fill no okay we're paying the vendor. Now, the fact that we're paying a vendor is why I believe the balance sheet accounts don't, the, the cash account isn't going to be breaking out by customer because this vendor isn't indicating which customer we deal with as opposed to the invoice where the invoice has the customer up top. So, but when I assign it line item by line item, I'm assigning the customer per line item. So I can't assign the customer to the checking account because there's no line item for the checking account because the checking account is just the other side of the transaction driven by the expense form. It's bottom line here. There's nothing assigned this to the, to the, to the, to the cu customer field. Okay. So let's do it again. Spit it out. I can't really talk yet. I'm still warming up here. Let's do the next one is, is 1,500. And then we'll say, this one also goes to customer 2501. Okay, this is gonna decrease the checking account. The other side's gonna go to uh, the cost of goods sold driven by the items. Save it and close it. Tab into the right in it and then run in it. And so, so it <clears throat> decreased the checking account. And so let's do that and then let's go then to, I believe it decreased the checking account, right? If I go into it, let's just double check that. If I could, Dr drilling down. So there it is. I don't think I refreshed it. And then let's go back, back on over. So that looks more correct. It's been refreshed now. All right, and then if I tab to the right and we run this report, now we've got customer number two and the sub customer. So now we got customer number one activity and then the total for customer number one and then customer number two and the sub customer or job related to that total for sub customer number two and then the total line, which is our total income statement. The fact that we have this long report that actually kind of sums up horizontally to the total could be quite nice when we're trying to figure out problems with our job costing kind of system. The downside, of course, is that once you have a whole lot of customers, you, you're going to get a very expansive report that is going to have a lot of horizontal line items to it. And if you have a lot of customers that aren't job related customers, it, it might be difficult to kind of differentiate. Like if you're selling other stuff that's not job related in QuickBooks and you have all these other customers in there that you're not trying to track by job, then that's going to that could be quite 
bothersome as well with this type of report. However, note that even if you have like a hundred customers, your your report's not going to be a hundred customers wide if you weren't doing actual jobs on those hundred customers because it's only going to be showing the activity being the income statement for this time range. So the income statement will just you know, if there was no activity in this time range, even though you had customers that you did work on prior to that, then it's not going to be showing up in this type of report would be the general idea. So in other words, if I, if I ran this report for 010126 to 123126 and, and run it, then I still had some activity that I put in the 26, but this isn't the same activity. I don't see customer number two here at all, right? So let's go back on over to 010125 to 123125 and run it. And let's just do at least one one more. I think I needed to add the income. Let's pull that on over to the income side. Plus button, invoice it. And then on the invoice, we're going to say that this is going to be for 501. And pull it in. And so then it pulls in <clears throat> beautifully. And so now we're going to have accounts receivable going up and the other side going to the revenue accounts driven by the items that we have set up. Let's save it and close it. And then balance sheet account, balance sheet account. The accounts receivable is breaking out properly because the accounts receivable line item can tell what line item it was because we actually assigned the customer to it as opposed to that check the expense account. And then if I go to the tab to the right and we run this one, now we've got the income and the expenses. Let's just, just do one more in customer number two so we could see this subtotal again. So if I go back on over and we say plus another expense, we could say let's do the, the second one for customer number two. And let's say this happened on 12 or so same kind of concept down here we'll just say that we had labor for uh, 3000 billable item and then it's going to be this one 512 this time and then we had materials materials for uh for one four let's say billable and it's going to go for 512. okay so What's this going to do? Decrease the checking account. And oh, I assigned it to a customer again. It shouldn't be a customer. <laughs> it should be the vendor. No. Okay. Now, because I'm assigning it to a vendor, then notice it can't really break out this number, which is the checking account, the other side of the transaction by customer, because it, there's no line item assigning this one to a customer. 